ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد in the quran allah mentions three different types of certainty three different levels of certainty level number 1 is the knowledge of certainty level 2 is the eye of certainty and then level 3 is the is the truth of certainty and two out of these three which of course this is not a coincidence are included in surah at-takathur alhakum at-takathur hatta zurtum al-maqabir the surah reminds us that there is a lot more to our existence than material things so allah reminds us the importance of preparing for the hereafter because once a person gets there there's no turning back there's no coming back there's no you know ya allah now that i've seen the truth now that i've seen that you know this is the reality of things can i go back so i can do things differently the answer to that of course is absolutely not rabbana absarna wa sami'na farji'na na'mal salihan inna muqinun right in surah sajda allah tells us that there are going to be people may allah protect us in the hereafter they end up saying our lord now we've seen and we've heard so send us back so we can do good deeds now we have certainty inna muqinun now we have yaqeen but of course by that point it's too late we ask allah to protect all of us from that situation amin rabbil alamin allah reminds us in surah at-takathur alhakum at-takathur hatta zurtum al-maqabir kalla sawfa ta'lamun thumma kalla sawfa ta'lamun kalla law ta'lamuna ilm al-yaqeen لترون الجحيم ثم لا ترونها عين اليقين ثم لا تسالون يوم اذا عن النعيم within this surah which is, which is a very tough surah allah mentions two out of the three allah mentions the first two out of the three allah mentions the knowledge of certainty then allah mentions the eye of certainty and then elsewhere in the quran in surah al-waqi'ah which is also primarily focused on the hereafter towards the end of the surah allah mentions wa innahu la haqqul yaqeen right the 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 reality of of certainty the truth of certainty yaqeen wa innahu la haqqul yaqeen fasabbih bismi rabbikal azim the name of the game as it relates to being successful in the hereafter is that of prevention and of course this term is very closely related to the circumstances that we're all dealing with now when it comes to coronavirus as well as any other virus any other illness but this one especially at this point in time the name of the game is prevention that's why there are so many different protocol in place in terms of the mask in terms of the social distancing in terms of you know one thing after another the importance of you know constantly washing our hands using hand sanitizer so on and so forth why are we taking all these different steps why are we doing all these different things the primary reason is prevention for us as well as others because god forbid if somebody if they do end up being diagnosed with the coronavirus and then it ends up being a very difficult situation for them perhaps they recover perhaps they don't maybe that whole situation that that entire package of difficulty maybe that whole thing could have been prevented right by way of literal literal prevention so we have a we have a parallel here when it comes to coronavirus and our health in general prevention is always preferable to cure this is the rule of thumb it's always preferable to prevent right different you know for example cavities it's preferable to prevent them as opposed to neglecting right uh preventive measures and then a person they end up with it and then they have to go and they have to find a cure and they have to they have to get it fixed prevention and that that's a small example but take something more serious right it could be some type of uh serious illness whatever it may be the name of the game is prevention and there's a parallel between 
our physical health in this life as well as our spiritual health in this life as it relates to both this life and the next. Prevention is the name of the game. It's, it's not acceptable. It's not sufficient for someone to simply show up on judgment day without putting in any effort in this life as it relates to prevention regarding, regarding hellfire, regarding serious consequences. It's not enough for a person to just, you know, shoot the breeze, wing it off the cuff, you know, just kind of get by by the seat of their pants and kind of figure it out as, as, as they go and stumble and mumble along. And then they show up on judgment day and then they see the reality of things. Again, notice the three different levels. There's the knowledge of certainty. And that's what we're limited to in this life. The knowledge of certainty. We're supposed to use this knowledge of certainty as prevention and protection and also as motivation to increase us in hope and to, to hope for God's reward. It's not just about the fear side of things, but also, uh, also the hopeful side of things, right? The idea is to take this knowledge from the Qur'an, from the Sunnah, from the Seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and to, to, to use this knowledge in ways to prepare as well as to prevent. If we do that, then in the hereafter, when we have the eye of certainty, Alhamdulillah, we prepared. Alhamdulillah, we put in work to prevent ourselves from ending up in a bad situation. So that knowledge of certainty was knowledge that was used properly and was beneficial knowledge used in, in positive ways. Therefore, the person ends up in a good situation on the Day of Judgment. At that point, they have the eye of certainty, right? Because at that point, they see what is, what is in fact reality. They see the reality of reality, right? So they see that. Some people, they see the reality of the hereafter. They see the reality of the day of judgment, and they want to go back so they can do good deeds. That's one category. May Allah protect us from that. The flip side is also present. Those who did prepare for that day, how did they prepare with their good deeds? Notice throughout the Qur'an, whenever you find any reference, and this is perfectly consistent throughout the Qur'an, Whenever you find any reference of somebody or a group of people wishing to go back to the dunya, the only thing they mention is they wish they could go back to do good deeds. So let's take a step back and analyze the different habits that we have. How are we doing in terms of our efforts related to good deeds? How are we doing in terms of the Qur'an? How are we doing in terms of the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How are we doing in terms, of, in terms of our adab, in terms of our character? Right? How are we doing as it relates to these different categories? Are we cultivating good deeds in order to reap the harvest of paradise, to reap the harvest of the hereafter, or are we not doing that? Because in the hereafter, everyone is certain at that point that yes, this in front of us is absolutely true, for better or for worse. Some prepared for it, glad tidings to them, and some did not prepare for it. May Allah protect us from that. Right? So in this life, we're limited to the knowledge of certainty. And then in the hereafter, there's this extra uh, layer, this increased level, the eye of certainty, and then the truth of certainty. Right? An example that scholars have given is to hear that there's a fire somewhere. So this is knowledge. You don't see the fire, you don't see smoke, you don't see anything, but a trustworthy person has come to tell you a messenger, you could say, has come to warn you and to tell you that over there, there's a fire. Avoid going to that place. Avoid going in that direction. Right? So the next time we're using whatever application, right, that we use on our phones or GPS, whatever it may be, if, if we're warned that there's an accident up ahead and so therefore there's a detour, the majority of the time, what are we going to do? We're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna appreciate the advice of that messenger, be it Waze or Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever, it doesn't matter. Right? We're going to take heed of that advice. We're gonna take heed of those words from that messenger, so to speak, because we would benefit from doing that. We would benefit from that knowledge that we're being told. Look, there's an accident up ahead, there's a traffic jam up ahead, therefore go this way. I want what's best for you to help you to get to your destination as smoothly and quickly as possible. Don't we ask Allah time and time again, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us down the straight path. Right? And, the, and and scholars have said that 
notice the wording. Allah didn't say, Allah didn't, didn't teach us to say, Ihdina ila as al mustaqim, guide us to the straight path, even though it may be translated in that way, and that's fine, that's understood. But there's an extra layer of nuance here. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. So if, if there were to be the ila, it would be like someone giving us directions from afar. Go this way, go that way, go this way, go that way. And that's how we can reach our destination. But ihdina sirat al mustaqim is a much more intimate request. The feeling is, please take me by the hand and guide me to where I need to go. I don't just want directions. I want to be guided even more intimately than that. I don't just want directions to get there. I want you to drive me there. This is the feeling of ihdina sirat al mustaqim. So time and time again, we're asking Allah to guide us to where we need to go. And we ask Allah to guide us in the right direction. Amni Rabbil Alameen. Scholars have commented on these, these different levels of certainty. And they've given this example that, you know, when if someone were to tell you that there's a fire somewhere, you don't see it and you don't feel it, but that knowledge, right, is, is there. Now, let's say a person, they, they don't uh, take heed. They don't pay attention to that knowledge. They don't benefit from it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, I'll figure it out on my own. I don't need you. I don't need your advice. I'll be fine. So let's say they continue in that direction anyways. And then they see, and then they see the smoke, right? So at that point, at that point, they see signs. They're actually seeing signs. It's not just information, right? But they start to see signs. They see the smoke. And then eventually they, they see the fire itself as well. And then the next layer is to actually feel the fire. Subhanallah. Right? As an example. So our job in this life, just like it just, just like as it relates to our physical health, the same applies to our spiritual health. Prevention is the name of the game. We don't want to end up in the hereafter in a state of regret, asking Allah to send us back so we can do good deeds. Here and now, let's try our best to look at our lives. Everyone has different circumstances. Everyone has different good things going on in their lives, as well as different challenges. Right? The idea is for each of us in our own unique circumstances to look at our lives and to ask ourselves, how are we interacting with our circumstances? And how can we interact with our circumstances in ways that will result in us coming closer to Allah Azza wa Jal? How can we utilize our circumstances in a way that we actually increase in good deeds? And the Prophet taught us, for example, that sadaqah, that charity, it's not limited to financial charity as important as that is. And we should all continue to support our local masajid. We should, con we should continue to support, to support the organizations that we would normally support, right? Out of gratitude to show Allah that yes, there are difficult circumstances. And actually by giving charity, my hope is that you'll increase me in good. So if someone has, they should give out of gratitude, Allah will give them more. And if a person has a little bit less, they should give what they can and never underestimate even the smallest amount. It could be a penny, never underestimate that. It could be a dollar, never underestimate that. Allah can easily turn that dollar into a million dollars in however much time. You never know where the barakah lies. Maybe someone, they're struggling, things are tight, and they decide that, you know what? I'm still going to give a dollar, hoping that Allah, with the intention, hoping that Allah will take this dollar and transform it from this tiny grain of sand into a massive mountain. And that's my hope, that's my intention. So they give that dollar. You never know. Maybe Allah appreciates that dollar so much that Allah gives you a million dollars in return in this life, a billion dollars in return in this life. And on top of that, more importantly, Allah is pleased with you because of that dollar that you gave, even when things are difficult, and Allah rewards you with Jannah. All of a sudden, in hindsight, in terms of dunya, the person's situation got so much better. In terms of akhirah, the person has entered into paradise, inshallah. That dollar, it's not just a dollar. Allah is looking at the heart of the person. More so than the financial, the material, tangible money. So if someone has, if they give, Allah will give them more. And if a person has less, but they give something, Allah will give them more. And perhaps grant them paradise 
as well. The Prophet, he taught us, and I'll conclude with this, that charity is not limited to, to the financial side of things, as important as the economic side of things is. Absolutely, there's no doubt that's important, and we should give financial charity. But the Prophet also taught us that there are other avenues of charity. There are also many other opportunities of charity. Every subhanAllah is a charity. Every la ilaha illallah is a charity. Every removing something harmful from the road is a charity. Just trying to do good and trying to avoid bad will bring a person closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. The primary concern for those who pass away in a bad situation when they're, they're in a bad situation with God, the only concern is to go back to do good deeds. Is Fir'aun concerned about his castle, his kingdom, his wealth, his gold, his whatever? No. SubhanAllah. May Allah protect us. When a person is in such a, a difficult situation, when they are, may Allah protect us, when they are dealing with the punishment of God, do you think they're concerned about, oh, my kingdom and my castle and my gold and my silver and whatever? No. The only concern is what? to go back and do good deeds. So let, let's take heed of this knowledge that we find from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the blessed Qur'an itself. Let's take heed from it. Let's benefit from this knowledge because layer one is knowledge of certainty and then layer two, level two, is the eye of certainty to actually see something because seeing something is not the same as hearing about it. But at this point, we're limited to hearing about it. But if we capitalize on it, then it, when it comes to the eye of certainty and the truth of certainty, then the, uh, the eye of certainty, these will be eyes that are pleased with Allah's reward. And the truth of certainty, these people will be pleased with the truth, the reality of paradise. So there, there's a fork in the road. If we benefit from this knowledge, then the rest of it can be hopefully a good situation. And if a person does not benefit from this knowledge, then things can go sideways, as they say, things can take a left turn and can end up in a bad situation. We ask Allah to protect us, we ask Allah to forgive us, we ask Allah to accept any of our efforts, we ask Allah for clean hearts, we ask Allah to protect us from shaitan, we ask Allah to protect us from despair, we ask Allah to protect us from depression, we ask Allah to protect us from anxiety, and for anyone struggling in any which way, in any way, shape, or form, we ask Allah to turn those hardships into ease. We ask Allah to relieve them of their worries. We ask Allah to turn their pain into peace and their sorrow into sincerity. We ask Allah to turn any, any difficulty they have, we ask Allah to turn it into ease. We may not know how, but Allah knows how. right? We do our part. We do the possible, and God will do the seemingly impossible. Of course, for Allah, it's not impossible. But the point is, just like Mary Alayhi salam, just like Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam, she, she barely shook the trunk of the tree. She did her part, and then Allah made the seemingly impossible happen for her. When Moses hit the sea, when he struck the sea, when he struck the ground with his staff, he did something that was possible, and then God made the seemingly impossible happen. Inna ma'ya Rabbi Sayyidin. We ask Allah to guide us through. This, this, this windy path that we're all struggling with, we ask Allah to, to guide us through it and we ask Allah to help us to make it to the other side as they say and for all of us to keep in mind that oftentimes the most beautiful destinations have the most difficult paths to get there. A person may be in Hawaii and they want to go to this mountaintop but the only way there you have to take a jeep over you know this muddy track and over these rocks you get to a point then you have to hike this crazy trail and it's super narrow and it's like on the edge of the mountain and very difficult even dangerous but then when the person gets there safely and then they have this amazing view subhanallah so yes there's this narrow path that we're struggling with there's this windy trail that we're struggling with but with god's grace help assistance and mercy we'll make it to that mountaintop we will make it to where we are trying to go we ask Allah to gather all of us in paradise. We ask Allah to relieve us of our worries. We ask Allah to make us from among those who remember him morning and evening. And we ask Allah to help us to benefit from those afkar. We ask Allah for the knowledge of certainty. We ask Allah for the eye of certainty and the truth of certainty. 
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين